Okay, fans, first Southland Conference volleyball interview of the year. We've done a few with coaches, done a few with SFA players, but conference play starts today in Southland Conference volleyball, and the Sugar Bears have made their way to Nacogdoches, and I'm sitting here with one of the best players in the Southland Conference. If you keep up at all, you know the name of Megan Nash. This is your senior year. Thanks for being willing to sit down and chat, Megan. Of course. Now, Megan, let me ask you first, one thing that UCA has in common with SFA is we only have one senior as well. Oh, really? Our, our, yes, our libero, Alexis Kane, is our only senior. How have you approached that this year, knowing that you're the only one they're going to honor on senior night? Um, I haven't really been thinking about it as I'm the only senior. Um, I feel like it's really like a team effort, and when it comes down to everything, your class doesn't matter anymore. So. That's kind of how I've been going for it. When you look back on your time at UCA, does it seem like the four years have gone fast? Does it seem like they've gone slow? Uh, definitely fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone that would say it goes slow. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything, you've been a leader because you've been uh, an instrumental player for Central Arkansas the whole time, really, that you've been there. But is there anything about this last year that you would say that because you're a senior has changed the way you've led? Um, I'm not sure. I would say I'm more leading by example, um, and I try to do that um, in the classroom and on the court, and I feel like I've been trying to do that all four years. I just feel like I have, people look up to me more this yeah. year, and people will really, really take in what I'm saying to them, so yeah. that's really the biggest difference. Okay. Do you see anything in any of the freshmen that reminds you of you? Do you see anything that you think, oh gosh, you know, I should give them that piece of advice because I remember that when I was a freshman? Or what, what do you see in some of your freshmen that makes you think, yeah, I struggle with that too? Um, yeah, I definitely see stuff in the freshmen. Mostly it's just not being vocal or feeling like they can be. Um, I felt like I had to be quiet when I was a freshman um, or I was like a little nervous to say something because people were like, oh, you're a freshman, we're going to listen to you. Yeah. So I just try to make them feel comfortable and like, let them know, like, hey, you can speak up. Like, you don't have to be quiet. You can, you can tell me what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, for years, of course, pouring over numbers and talking to you before conference tournaments and when we've been in Conway, um, uh, I mean, I've talked to you before, but I read something in your bio sketch that I guess I'd read, but I wanted to ask you about before we talk volleyball. It says in there that you can sleep through anything. Is this true? I mean, do you really have this ability to just zone out like that? Uh, well, as I've gotten older, it's gotten better, but freshman year, we were on a bus trip, and you know, we have a sleeper bus, so uh -huh. I was on the bottom bunk sleeping, and the whole team went into a restaurant, they started ordering, and they're like, where is Megan? And I was passed on the bus, coach comes out, was like banging on the bus to get me up, I didn't hear it, I was totally asleep, it was like part of my dream, and then, um, <laughs> Our old coach came on the bus with our trainer, Steve, and they're like, Megan, Megan, they didn't see me. I guess I was like really in my blanket. And then as they're like leaving, I heard them. I was like, what is going on? Everyone was like already ordered their food and everything. I was still asleep on the bus. They thought they left me at the school we were coming from. And I was just asleep the whole time. But definitely as I've gotten older, I've been, I've been getting better. <laughs> so, no, so no problems with getting up to go to early class or anything no, like that? No, no, I can wake up, yeah. but. Yeah. can also sleep really well. <laughs> yeah, we had a player, I've told this a couple times, we had a DS named Janet Hill, and if Janet and her parents are watching this, they'll chuckle, but Janet would sleep on the bottom of the bus, and they claimed that she could just roll from like underneath the bus, and she could just turn and roll. She slept actually on the floor of the bus. That's what that <laughs> Okay, volleyball. Now, last year, last year about this time, Central Arkansas was not on a big run. No. Uh, early in conference play, if I, I think if I'm right, Central Arkansas lost their first five conference games. You went on a skid, I know that. But then at the end of the season, you got things together and played really well. This year, you played really well. You're 11-1. and one. What's been the big difference between being able to start so fast this year? Um, I just want to say maturity, and we have a lot more upperclassmen this year. Last year, we also had one senior, so it was me, I was a junior, and then um, we had one senior, and the rest was underclassmen, so it was a little bit overpowering of young players. Um, so I think we definitely have a better balance of upperclassmen to underclassmen. Um, and then also, like, our starting lineup is essentially the same as last year. We have 
the same like key players on the floor. Um, so we've been playing together. This is our second year, pretty much, with the same lineup. Uh, UCA comes in 11 and one. They won. Uh, I think this is the, the tie for, or, or is the best start in, in Sugar Bear volleyball history. SFA had that same record at one point, uh, and when we were 11 and one, it was the best start in our program history. Uh, viewers know now that we've lost three of the last four, but uh, two teams will face off tonight that have had a very, very good preseason. Uh, Coach Jenny Jones Chapman was in here with us for just a moment before we got on camera. And you mentioned your old coach, uh, David McFatridge. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to get into anything that would ever float through your head negative. I want you to focus on the positives. But what you played for both. Some of the players in this team have not played for both. What do you see as the main stylistic differences between Fatch when you came in and Coach Jones now? How are they different? Um, I would say Fatch was more all out all the time. Didn't really focus on like the specifics and the little little things that can really help you and like it was just fast paced like all out. Um, Jones helps out a lot more with um, the details and like the minor things. She takes the time to like break it down um, but both are great coaches. Yeah. So. Uh, Dave McFatridge now over at Mississippi State. Um, as you look back over four years again what's the one element of your game that you think is most improved from when you're a freshman? My blocking for sure. And, and that and that says a lot because you were in the block leaders even early. So how? Technically better? Uh, reading better? What what specifics about blocking have you improved on? Um, I would say my technique and then also just having more of a focus on my blocking because when I came in I was just like, I'm a middle hitter. Mm -hmm. And now, now I would classify myself as a middle blocker. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is cool because that that's an interesting thing that you bring up because some teams on their rosters will list girls at MH, not MB. Mm -hmm. And that kind of tells you something about how they want to utilize the person who plays that position, whether the focus is on offense or defense. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let me ask you about a few of your teammates. Um, again, you've been central to this team for a while, but some of these girls I want to go through, I think some fans will know, and some of them are new. Mm -hmm. I just want to get you to comment uh, first heard a lot this year, Sam Anderson, mm -hmm. great player. We talked to her last year. Sam appears to have improved another step. Talk about how good it is to have Anderson next to you on the right. Um, it's great. I love blocking next to her. Um, I just love playing next to her. She, she's really stepped up in terms of um, being more consistent because we did see a lot of glimpses of how she's this year for last year, but she's like this all the time now. Um, she finds a way to score all the time. Um, that brings a lot of energy to the team. Haley Tippett, um, in talking to the people at Arkansas State, one of the things they said, and I don't hear this very often, is that they classified her as one of the best transition players they'd seen this year. That her ability to get off the left side net offensively, to hit, back up front, to block. Haley, the last two years, has also added a lot to the UCA mm -hmm. front line. Um, for her, I think it was more of a her mental game um, and her attitude, um, and she's definitely stepped up in that area. And then, you know, that was the only thing that was really holding her down. So she's she's doing really well for the team this year, and she's also giving a lot of positive energy to us. Sophomore setter Elizabeth Armstrong, uh, reigning Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Week, uh, tournament MVP last week. You have Marissa Collins mm -hmm. uh, back as a coach. For those that are around the Southland know that that name resonates among all setters of all time. Um, that's got to have, got to have, mm -hmm. help Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, she's she's kind of like her, her go-to coach, you know. She's always giving um, EB, which is Elizabeth, we call her EB, um, <laughs> giving her some input. Um, and just really helping her out um, a lot mentally too. Just, you know, setters are all mental. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. You know, knowing everything. Um, and I also think just coming in as a sophomore this year and not as a freshman right. um, also helps. Um, and having Marissa like helping her out because last year she didn't really have, I mean, the coaches helped her, but she right. didn't have like a player to help right. her. Yeah. Um, and then she's also helping our freshman setter Bailey. Um, so, yeah. I'm glad that I let you 
uh, shorten her name. I couldn't remember whether y'all called her EB or EA. <laughs> so I'm glad you said it. I almost called her EA there for a minute. And, that would have been <laughs> and the last one I want to ask you about, one player that uh, people probably don't know because she's new. She's been a little barrowing for you a little bit, freshman. Emily Doss. Mm -hmm. um, this is somebody that we'll get a chance to see tonight for me for the first time. I've, I've read about her, talked to some people about her. I talk about uh, her growth here early on in the season as freshman anchor in the back row. Um, she's doing really great. She's super scrappy. You know, she's always there to cover you. Um, just gets everything up. Um, she's quick. Um, she's a great player. You know, she's a little quiet sometimes, but mm -hmm. she'll eventually. Dominate yeah, right. <laughs> even more than she is now. So. Yeah, kind of like you were talking about earlier, freshman, kind of trying to mm -hmm. learn to be vocal. Um, you know, I think middle blocker is probably as a demanding position on the court as any. Not that any are particularly simple to play; they're not. But there's just so much going on in the middle. Of course, just the jumping that has to take place over and over again. As you, as you watch. An offensive play develop so you're on defense mm -hmm. and the uh, opposing team is uh, let's say they're in system and you're trying to make reads on things what's the most what are the things you're looking for and what are the things that are most difficult to read when an offense is in system um, well I'm looking where all the hitters are in case they're you know running crossing patterns um, and then where the setter is obviously just to pass it on the net um, but the hardest thing to read would be the setter. Um, and then just going all out from there. Um, you know, Coach Jones always talks about it as like uh, blocking, middle blocking is like an effort thing and it's a mm -hmm. mindset thing. Um, just like how hard are you going to work when you're in the middle because it's so easy to just watch it all happen. Um, yeah, so it's just really reading the setter but also seeing where the players are before she sets it. So for a young player who's playing this position, when she hears us I know what you're talking about mm -hmm. when you say read the setter, but say there's someone that's young, high school player or middle school player, when we talk about reading the setter, what are things that specific that you look for? Is that uh, the way their face, their hands, the way they look? What, what it, how would you describe the meaning of read the setter? Um, it depends on the setter, but you know, every setter has their tendencies, so sometimes they're back setting. You know, maybe they'll arch the back mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. If they're setting the middle, they'll jump, but they won't mm -hmm. jump when they're setting the pins. Um, just little things like that that can vary with each setter. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're closing, it's just you need to react. You have to wait and you have to react. You can't, you can, you can't guess. You'll always lose. <laughs> yeah, you hit the two that uh, I hear about and watch for the most, the arching of the back. And this is kind of a lesson for any of you that are younger setters. You've got to be as consistent as possible with every ball. I mean, I know the ball has got to come off your hands different when you're back setting than setting out in front of you, but the arching of the back is something I hear a lot of middles talk about. And uh, just, the, just the way and then the jumping. Mm -hmm. that you talked about, that, that the height of, they, they won't even jump the same height based upon where they set. So those were both. Mm -hmm. good things. Last thing I want to ask you, um, through the years, in the nature of what I do, you know, I meet a lot of players, coaches, I meet a lot of parents. Your father mm -hmm. has been very, very, he, he, every time he sees me in the gym, he makes an effort to just come talk. And I know that your family means a lot to you. You have two sisters. Mm -hmm. um, just close this conversation up with sort of, your your memory of your family and how they've helped you in terms of your volleyball career and what kind of support those mm -hmm. people are to you? Well, so first of all, I'm the only athlete in my family, of me and my sisters. Um, my dad played hockey his whole life. My mom never, ever played sports, so <laughs> nobody knows anything about volleyball. And they still barely know anything about volleyball. Um, Including your dad? He does, but like, conference tournament last year, the ref called a double on the setter, and he's does that mean? <laughs> so it's like, he only knows so much. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. every time we talk about something, he'll just be like, oh yeah, like in hockey, that's like this, it's like yeah. this. Like he'll, yeah. he'll relate everything to hockey. So like, you know, he doesn't really know much about it, but he's always there to support me um, and my sisters, even though like they don't really understand. Um, they're always there. Um, one thing I always remember, and my dad will, <laughs> could tell you this also, um, he would go to every tournament with me, every club tournament, and he would get smoked salmon and we would eat smoked salmon in the car on the drive home every time. <laughs> what a great yeah. memory that is. Yeah, I love smoked salmon. <laughs> what a great Now, for those of you that don't know, 
uh, Megan's from uh, Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if I remember right, went to uh, Holy Catholic Trinity uh, yeah, High School. Yeah, right? Holy Trinity. Yep. Okay, in, in Ontario. So, does your dad? Does your dad still live in Canada, or is he? Yep, my whole family's up there. Um, my older sister just graduated from university, and my younger sister just started. Um, I'm the middle child, so I'm about to finish off after this year. Wow. So. All these years when I've seen your dad in the gym, he's been traveling from Ontario to come to all these Southland Conference matches? Yeah, so he pretty much came to, since we hosted a conference two years in a row, he came to both of those. Um, and then he's gonna come to my senior night this year, and I think my mom and my sister are coming to that too. And then he's also gonna come to Corpus for a conference tournament. Well, we'll catch up with all the Nash family then, Corpus <laughs> Christi. It's always good to sit down and chat with Megan and all the Sugar Bears, always so gracious. This program, actually UCA's program, was really one of the first ones that embraced part of what I was doing before, even before uh, Megan uh, walked in the doors at UCA. So I'm always appreciative to the staff at Central Arkansas and as far as the family that hopefully get a chance to watch this and see Megan and we'll see all of you guys down in Corpus. Good luck tonight, Megan, and thanks for being willing Thank to sit down and chat. Thank you so much.